How's it going everybody? So today I am going to go over the problem number of islands. I've gone over this problem previously on my channel, but I'm going to show you how to solve it in a different way using a breadth first search. Number of islands is without a doubt the most popular video on my YouTube channel and on LeetCode itself, so it's definitely a good problem to know. So make sure to like and subscribe if you like this type of content and let's get into the video. So for this problem, we are given a 2D array containing only ones and zeros. Ones represent land and zeros represent water. So we need to count the number of islands that we have inside of this 2D grid. An island is constituted as ones that are connected horizontally or vertically, not diagonally. So in this example, we would have a total of two islands. Each island contains only ones connected horizontally or vertically. Since we are solving this using a BFS, breadth first search, we will initialize a queue to keep track of the position we are at inside of this 2D array. Also, we're going to have a variable called islands to keep track of how many islands that we tally up as we are going through this 2D grid. So it's pretty easy to understand what this problem is asking us to do, but the algorithm may not be so intuitive. To start things off, we're going to loop over all elements in this 2D array. So right now, we're going to start at position 0, 0, the very top left of our grid, and it is looking at a 1, which is land. When we encounter a 1 when looping over our array, we can tally plus 1 to our island count. Now, all we need to do is change all 1s connected horizontally or vertically to zeros. So this whole chunk of 1s will end up getting changed to zeros to make sure that we do not tally up the same island more than once. So essentially what we're doing is we're changing land to water. Then we need to add that position to our queue. We do this so that we can later see if there are any other ones, land, attached to the current position we are looking at to make up an island. So what data type should we use for our queue? You could use an array to keep track of your coordinates, but instead I'm going to use just an integer. I'm gonna convert this 2D coordinate to a 1D coordinate. So instead of storing an array for each position, it'll just be an individual integer. So I'm sure you might be wondering, well, how do we do that? So if we do our row number times the number of columns plus the column number, so we're at position 0, 0, so that would be 0 times 3 plus 0, we are left with an individual value of 0. What we have done here is convert position 0, 0, a 2D coordinate, to 0, which is a 1D coordinate. And if this doesn't make sense, I have a whole video that goes into detail of this if you want more context on this approach, and the link will be in the description. So now all we need to do is add the number 0 to our queue, and we can start our BFS starting from this position. We're going to continuously remove and add to our queue until there is no more land connected together. So if we pull from the top of our queue, we have the number zero that we just computed. And now what we're going to do is convert this back to our 2D integer. So if we take our index divided by the number of columns, that would be our row number. So zero divided by three is zero. Then if we take our index mod the number of columns, that would equal our column number. So zero mod three would also be zero. So what we've just done is convert our 1D coordinate back into our 2D coordinate zero, zero. Now we will check the left, up, right, and down directions to see if there's any land attached together. Above us, that would be out of bounds, so we ignore it. To the right of position 0, 0, that is 0, which is water, and we can just ignore any water. We only care about land. Below us, at position 1, 0, we would encounter a 1, which means that we have two pieces of land attached together. So we're going to change this land to water, then add the position 1, 0 to our queue. So if we convert this to a 1D integer, we would do our row times the number of columns plus the column number, and that would equal three, so we're gonna add three to our queue. Finally, we're gonna check to the left of us, and that would be out of bounds, so we're going to ignore it. Now we're gonna repeat the same steps as before, pull from our queue, and we're gonna get the index three. So we need to convert this number back to a 2D integer. Three divided by the number of columns would be one. Three mod the number of columns would be zero. We have our 2D coordinate back, one, zero, and now we must check all directions from this position. So above us, we have a zero, that's just water, and we ignore it. To the right, we have land at the position one, one. So we're going to change it to a zero and add the 1D coordinate to our queue. So one times the number of columns plus one would equal four, and we're going to add four to our queue. 
below us and to the left of us, that would be out of bounds. So we're just going to ignore those positions. Once again, we're gonna pull from our queue. We get index four, four divided by the number of columns is one, four mod number of columns is one. So we're gonna check all directions at position one, one above us to the right and to the left are all zeros water so we can just ignore them below us is out of bounds so what that means is our bfs is done for this one island now as you can see this entire island has only been counted one time and there is no way we will recount it since we changed all of the positions to water now that we performed vfs on this one section of the 2d grid we're going to continue looping through our array looking for any more land so 0, 1 is water, we're going to skip it, 0, 2 is land, so we make another tally to our island count and change that position to a 0 and add it to our queue. 0, 2 converted to a 1D integer, we do 0 times the number of columns plus 2 and that would equal 2. Now we're going to perform a BFS once again, we're going to pull from our queue and we get a value of 2. So 2 divided by the number of columns is 0, 2 mod number of columns is 2. Above and to the left of position 0, 2 is out of bounds, left and below 0, 2 are water, so our BFS ends for the second island. The second island was just one individual point. Now we're gonna loop through the rest of our array and all of the positions left to loop over are just water. So we're actually done counting all of our islands for this 2D matrix. By the end of looping over our 2D array, our entire matrix should be water. So our final answer is two islands. Okay, so let's start implementing the code for this solution. The first thing we wanna do is just a sanity check to make sure that if our grid is null or empty, that we handle that. Now we're going to create the islands variable that we talked about. And then we're also going to need the row and column numbers of our grid. So we could say rows equals grid dot length and poles equals grid index zero dot length. And now we just need to loop over our grid in order to perform a BFS on each individual island. So now that we're looping over every position on our grid, we need to check specifically for land. We only care about land because that's what constitutes an island. So we can come in here, we'll say if grid at position ij is equal to the character one land, then what that means is we're going to increase our islands variable. We know for sure that we found an island and then we're going to start performing our BFS. So we're gonna have a function, we can just call it fill with water and we're gonna pass in our grid, we're gonna pass in our rows, our columns, and then our position i and j. So exactly how it sounds, fill with water, will perform a BFS to fill in all of the land that is connected together to water. In this function, we're going to initialize a queue, just like how we talked about, that's what a BFS will use. So we could say queue is of the type of an integer because it's gonna be a 1D coordinate. We call it queue new linked list and just for reference we're going to have to do conversions 2d to 1d 1d to 2d so a 2d to 1d conversion is going to be our row number times the number of columns plus our column and then our 1d to 2d conversion we're going to do the index that we've calculated the 1d coordinate divided by the number of columns, that will be our row number, and then index mod number of columns will equal our column number. So in order to start off our BFS, we need to add our current position i and j into our queue. So we can come in here, we'll say queue.add. So i in this case is our row number. So we say i times the number of columns, we already passed that in, plus j, which is our column number, and then we need to change this current position to water because at this point, when we come into this BFS, it's still land. So we'll come in here, we'll say grid at position ij is equal to the character zero. And now we can start our BFS. So we'll say while our queue is not empty, and then we're going to extract the 1D integer from our queue. So we could say queue.pull, and this is where we're going to convert the 1D coordinate back to a 2D coordinate. So we'll say int row 
is going to be equal to the index divided by our columns. Int column is going to be index mod columns. Now what we need to do here, this is just like any typical BFS, we need to check the up, left, right, and down positions. So an easy way to do this is we can actually just come up here, we'll say private final, this will be an in, a 2D integer array, and we can call it directions. And so this is going to contain all of the directions that we need to check. So first, we're going to have position 1, 0, then negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and then finally 0, negative 1. So as you can see, each one of these individual arrays of size 2 are going to check the left, up, right, and down positions. So with this 2D integer array, if we come back down here, we can loop over these directions. So we'll say int direction of directions. And now we're going to compute our new x and y coordinate based on the direction that we're at. So we can say int x is going to be direction at position 0 plus our row number. And then int y will be direction at position 1 plus our column number. So this is just an easy way so that you don't have to check each individual direction separately. So all the logic will be contained in this for loop. Now we need to check if this x and y coordinate that we just calculated will result in out of bounds because we don't want to check any out of bounds positions. So we'll say if x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than our row number and y is greater than negative 1 and y is less than our column number, and our grid at position x, y is not equal to a 0. Or another easier way to think about it is equal to 1. We only want to check positions that are land that are connected horizontally or vertically. So if all of this evaluates to true, we can say grid at position x, y, we're going to immediately change it to water, and then we're going to add this position to our queue. So we can say queue.add x times our columns plus our y. So there we go. That is the BFS implementation of number of islands. Let's submit just to make sure it works. Aww. Oh, I forgot to do a return statement. So we're going to return our islands, obviously. Let's submit one more time. You can never get it first try. So our time complexity is going to be big O of n times m, where n is the number of rows we have and m is the number of columns. In the very worst case, our array could contain all ones, so essentially our whole matrix is land. What that would mean is that we would need to perform a BFS over the entire matrix. Even with doing that, however, that would mean that we would have to perform the BFS in each position and then loop over all of the positions one more time. So we would essentially be touching each position in the worst case two times, but that is still big O of n times m since we're just taking the biggest term. And then our space complexity is going to be big O of the minimum between n and m, where n is our rows and m is our columns. Even in the worst case, when we have ones in our whole grid, we would not be adding all of those positions to our queue at the same time. We are consistently pulling from our queue in order to add new neighbors. So the space complexity will be the minimum between either the row length or the column length. And that minimum will be the maximum that our queue will grow to. So that was the breadth first search approach to the popular question number of islands. If you like this type of content, definitely feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Also, you can become notified when I upload new videos. I've been very consistent to upload every single week with fully animated tutorials. So definitely stick around for that. Also, check out my Patreon if you want access to the private Discord channel. We do have a small community. And with that, I will see you guys next time.